Amazing. All right. What's good, world? Your man Precise right here. We're rolling out. Um, I have some amazing guests with us here today, and, and their story is amazing. Um, Coco and Breezy are business owners who were driven by their circumstance. They are a product of the MySpace era, and all of their friends have joined them on their journey as they have taken their fashion sense and heart to the highest of levels. Today, we welcome Coco and Breezy. What's good, y'all? Hey, how are you? I'm awesome. So is this what it's going to be? You guys are going to be answering questions together the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's all good. I get it. Um, wow. Thank you so much for taking out the time to speak with us. I have a lot of questions for you. Um, but again, like I said, I won't keep you long, but I just want to just jump into it. And again, thank you so much. Um, for sure. For sure. Now, above all the amazing accomplishments that, that you guys have achieved, your resilience is what resonated with me the most. Talk about how, how did the challenges with regards to your uh, parents and even bullying help to shape who you are today? I would say for us, when we were younger, you know, as we always talk about, we got bullied. We always felt like outsiders. We grew up in Minnesota and there wasn't a lot of um, diversity growing up in Minnesota. And so we were always these eclectic, artsy, you know, black girls that were in the middle of nowhere pretty much. And mm -hmm. our being bullied at that time, we were kind of like, I wouldn't say it made us sad, but we channeled the sadness into creativity. Mm -hmm. And we just said, you know what, instead of us being home sad, not fitting in, let's just be super creative and make things. And what really made us be extremely resilient is again, we came from a very humble household where our parents didn't have, we grew up with not a lot of money, just, you know, making ends meet. And our parents did a really good job of like not showing if we were struggling, we couldn't tell, but we knew that we were just getting by. And so mm -hmm. when Coco and I quit everything and saved a little bit of money to move to New York, we were so passionate because we had nothing to lose. Like we didn't have, we only had, things to gain, but we really didn't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. And yes, I break it down that way is because like we didn't have a lot of money to lose. We didn't have anything. <laughs> so we all we had was like our confidence, our resilience, mm -hmm. and our dreams and goals. Yes. yes. So okay, so now you you take all your money, move to New York. What did you take from Minnesota with you? Like what about Minnesota in, uh, informed what you were doing uh, around the world or specifically in New York? Well, one thing we took from Minnesota was just like personally was us being Minnesota nice. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's a thing. Yo, that brought us a long way. Like mm -hmm. having that nice definitely brought us a long way. But um, what do we take with us? Honestly, what we took was if there was any childhood traumas we took that with us and we made that into creativity because again, bullying was a childhood trauma for us that it kind of traveled with us through our adult life. Mm -hmm. And we just like formed it into a level of creativity. And like Coco said, with in regards to our Minnesota niceness, with our, a mix of Minnesota nice and then the aggressive side of being now like New Yorkers, when you're networking and meeting a lot of people, the key is to like treat people with love and to be nice to folks. And mm -hmm. I think we had that Minnesota niceness about us. People wanted to work with us. We were easy, we're, we've always been easy to work with. We still are extremely easy to work with because again, the Minnesota nice is a real thing. <laughs> right, for sure. Now, all right, so the Minnesota niceness, all of that, and one of the things that you touch on a lot is your creativity. Why glasses? <laughs> what inspired you to make the glasses cooler? Of all the things you could choose, why was it glasses? Growing up, we were always into fashion and just like, oh, okay, fashion. We were always into style. Because mm -hmm. I believe there's a difference between being fashionable and stylish. Not mm -hmm. everything is stylish. Mm -hmm. Stylish mm -hmm. is, be stylish is to be effortless. And it doesn't matter how much your outfit costs, it's about how you put it together. And mm -hmm. so for us, we were always into like, our own personal style mm -hmm. and I wear always finished off our outfits and our looks. And so at that time we couldn't find cool glasses. So we were buying safety goggles and 
you know, we were gluing studs and spikes and customizing our glasses. And yeah, those were dope. Thank, Thank you. you. They were definitely an mm-hmm. error. And they also gave us a level of confidence as well because through bullying, it kind of like messed up with our um, our confidence and our, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. Like our inner peace. Mm-hmm. And so at that time, uh-huh. it was actually something that we created for ourselves, not knowing that it could become a business. And then as we started to, you know, mm-hmm. have traction, um, now we're in the business of eyewear because we want to provide a luxury experience at an accessible price point with like beautiful designs and not only mm-hmm. making something fashionable, but also creating a product that's functional and within the eyewear market, making sure that our brand is also talking to people that brands never talk to, which is black and brown people, queer people, and folks that may feel like they don't have a community to be a part of. Mm -hmm. You know, that's amazing. And I appreciate that that you keep it at a price point that's affordable. Uh, Because, I mean, the people that you align with early on, everybody, I can go down a list of names, everybody from Lady Gaga to Beyonce. However, one that stands out is Prince. How did that happen? And how did how, what inspired that three lens style? Yes, the that way we first lens got, design specifically. <laughs> yeah, the way we first got in touch with Prince is that he um he had someone from his team reach out to us on Facebook, mm-hmm. and we got this random message. Mm-hmm. Wow, Prince is in um in New York. He wants to meet up with you guys at where was it? The House of Blues. Mm-hmm. Can you come? Can you come up here? Mm-hmm. And. We didn't write him back because we didn't think that they were talking about like Prince, you know, like I thought it was some random person. So we did not write them back. (laughs) And then like a month later, we get another message. Hey, Prince wants to know if you guys can come to Paisley Park. Are you in Minnesota? We still didn't write him back because it felt like a fraud, like a fake person (laughs) writing us. Like it felt fraud. And then a few weeks later, our friend calls us. Her name is Maya. She goes by Shameless Maya. And she's like, hey, I've been working with Prince. He's been trying to get in touch with you guys. Have you been in touch? And I was like, no, girl. But I'm like, are you, you mean to tell me that the person that wrote us on Facebook is from Prince's real team? And we hung up with her, called them. He, he ended up flying us to New Orleans like the next week. And we performed with him actually at the Essence Festival. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we hung out with wow. him at Paisley. And then he was like, I want glasses to cover my third eye. And Breezy designed a, a few different versions, and it was history after that. Yo, you've created an iconic piece of art. Yeah. Like, that's how I see that. It's so amazing. At first, at first when I saw the, the um, because I remember seeing the album art a long time ago, when I, that's, the, the glasses stood out. But then when I found out you guys made it, like, it's truly an iconic piece of art. Like, congratulations on that. Thank and you. then the idea that he's from Minnesota, like, how did that How did that feel knowing that basically it's your hometown, boy hitting you up, like, can you make me some glasses? <laughs> That's dope. It felt amazing because I remember growing up and walking past Paisley Park and just being like, oh, my gosh, that's where Prince is. Like, as a kid, it's such a childhood um, memory of ours. Mm-hmm. It's almost like full circle that we – had the honor to work with him and spend a lot of personal time with him as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So now you're going into your your 12th year of business. How have you managed to maintain this longevity and remain fresh? I would say the way that we've maintained our longevity is we are always evolving. Mm-hmm. Always, we're always evolving, but we're always we're not we're never giving a thousand every time. You know, I think that it's important to to know to know like we know our ultimate goal, and mm-hmm. for us, we don't want to be a brand that's only about the hype. We want to be a long term, you know, mm-hmm. a long term brand that everyone will remember forever. And so, like you know, we don't build things off of the hype. We build things off of longevity and intention and intention. It's something that we're actually really proud mm-hmm. of. Too. Um, I think why we've been able to last long and we're only scratching the surface is that we're, we're continuing to just always be true to ourselves and a project and a product and collaboration that we just came out with, I think is like super near and dear to our hearts, but we're tapping into the younger generation and the youth 
and we just launched a kids collaboration with Zimmy. And it's for ages mm-hmm. 8 to 12 years old. And why I'm so passionate about it, because growing up when I was a kid, I didn't have glasses that I could afford that were fly. I also didn't have an eyewear brand that I could go mm-hmm. to where I could put myself in a campaign as well. And so I'm proud of this collaboration because we're speaking to the babies. Like the 8 to 12 year olds are the future and they are we're depending on them, you know, and this collaboration, all the names of the products are affirmations. And so you have glasses called I am powerful, Mm -hmm. I am brave. And again, everything that we do is, you know, and so it's like, if we can put these positive affirmations into these kids heads and we can make them, kids don't want to feel like they're kids anymore. Mm -hmm. We can't give them a kiddie product. We can give them a product that speaks to them in Mm -hmm. 2020. And we think that it was exciting to partner up with Zenny because, you know, oh, go ahead. Oh, we thought it was pretty, oh, it's exciting to, that we got to partner up with Zenny. It was actually a dream of ours. Mm-hmm. We manifested this because for a long time we were saying we would love to do a collaboration with, with Zenny because we want to be able to create a kid's line that's super accessible. Like, and I'm affordable. Talking, and affordable. Super so affordable. All the kids' glasses are under $30. And when I tell you they're stylish, they're everything that we always wanted as kids. Yeah. So for us, it was it was actually crazy because we were working on this during like we first went on shutdown and on lockdown. So we actually shot the campaign. Well, mm-hmm. the photographer shot the campaign on FaceTime, and we had to cast the kids on Instagram. Wow! We had to have the stylist send them clothes through mail, and so this whole project is so near and dear to our hearts because even like during this time, we even shifted our campaign because we went through, like we've been, we worked on it for like a year, mm-hmm. but then once COVID hit and once, you know, the civil rights movement has been happening in the human rights mm-hmm. that are happening in America, we said, you know what, let's repivot the campaign and the messaging to be sure that whatever we put out, kids are able to feel good and learn something while the world is like going through what it's going through. And the even more amazing part is that in the beginning, we were going to have our campaign about stop bullying. And then we said, you know what? Since kids are going through a lot right now, let's focus on mental health, especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. Mental health Mm -hmm. is a topic that we don't really Mm -hmm. talk about. And we need to start talking about it more. And we had to bring more awareness. So we partnered up with Child Mind Institute. And a percentage of our profits are actually being donated to Child Mind Institute for every Planet CD times any um, sale. And it's going towards their Healthy Brain Network mm-hmm. and better access to mental health services to the Black community. So we are so pumped about that part as well. Yeah. That, for me, actually, that's one of the most exciting things that we've done in life. Yeah, I mean, you guys are extremely dynamic. And there's a word that you've used a few times that has really kind of rang a bell in my mind, and that's manifestation. What does that mean to you, to manifest? So what that means to me is that I'm very big on the power of words, and we can choose how we want to feel. And so for me, I believe that I can manifest. Actually, everything that we're doing right now, I manifested this. And it's not an overnight mm-hmm. situation. And it's not magical. It's not, it's not magical. It's, it is, we're, we are just magical beings. But what it is is that like when you manifest things, you say it, you believe it, you feel it. And then and internally you believe that you're magical, you know? And so it's like, if you're saying these things, you're feeling it and you are imagining yourself doing mm-hmm. it you're going to like your body is going to automatically and your mind is going to work towards it. And that's why with our Planet CB and Zenny glasses for kids, the fun part is that since the names do have the affirmations, the goal is that these kids are saying, I am happy. I am positive. And they say it multiple times with their parents. So now it's not about them just wearing glasses. It's about them saying these affirmations and helping them manifest how they want to feel. Yes. Empowering, empowering themselves. This is so powerful. You are doing an amazing work. 
So okay. one another thing I wanted to touch on was was this other artistry that you expressed. So your DJing and the producing. So I know I went and I noticed one of the uh you know one of your sets. Do you guys always DJ in tandem like that? Yes, we always DJ in tandem. Um, we are a duo, and it's funny because since we are twins, our sets look a little different, and it's like we're not reading each other's minds; we read each other's energies when we're playing. Mm -hmm. That's what I was wondering about that because I'm like, who's picking the songs? <laughs> who's doing the blends? Like, it's just it's just everything happening naturally. It's everything happening naturally. And you know what? I would say like Breezy owns picking the songs and I own the blends, but we, but we, do, it we do it together though. But I had the last word on the songs and she has the last word on the blends. On the blends, yeah. But we're like, we're moving and grooving. We're not even talking, we're okay. just feeling it out. It's a very unspoken. Oh, you, you are true. Yep. Yeah, you're truly on a vibe then when, when you guys are DJing, you're vibing out for real. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, feel yeah, like I can I'm not see that. Um, yeah, that's so awesome. Like, I'm so excited to meet you guys. I feel like this is a very special moment. Um, so the Zinni partnership is doing something amazing. Uh, you guys just released another song uh, called You. Um, but when you came in, I was listening to Convo. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed as though you were being very deliberate in that song. So can you talk about that song a little bit in the video? Yeah, so Combo was our first official single. And, you know, that song is special because we actually released it during, it was like a little bit after the height of George Floyd. And, you know, for us, we felt, we've been feeling a little sensitive with releasing content and new things during this like sensitive time. So we feel like whatever content we put out, we want to be sure that we use our platform to share a bigger message. Mm -hmm. And once we actually did the music video, we were like, all right, we're on lockdown. We can't do an official music video, but how do we create some sort of PSA that gives people an open space? And also how do we show people like what we were going through during quarantine? And so we, we teamed up with our friends from around mm -hmm. the world, some internet friends, some real friends, and we said, what do you want to have a conversation about? And people wrote on their, their pieces of paper about, you know, some touchy topics about what they want to have conversations about. And then all of the footage you see of Breezy and I, that's our, our video dump from when we were at home when we first went on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very powerful video. And the messages that people were sharing uh, resonated just throughout the whole video. And it's just beautiful and it's uplifting so great work on that song i think you accomplished you. something very powerful with that thank you so what's next for you guys you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> what is next there's so much for, there's so much we're working on but um i mean something else that's exciting as well is that we we have a i'm not sure if you know but we have a another project or another company it's called the Lorca, and it's a, a real estate project that um Mm -hmm. It's five houses in the Catskills, and you can go there, be in nature. They're all super curated. But again, that's for we believe that going into nature for like mental health is like so important mm -hmm. and healthy. But I think what's next for us really is that our goal is that we're so passionate with kids, and so we want to do anything we do right now is for the youth, mm -hmm. and we want to just be able to create a blueprint. Mm -hmm these kids that were like us growing up who didn't have a lot of resources mm -hmm. how they can do what we're doing what everyone else is doing exactly yeah and just to continue mm -hmm. to just uh, be ourselves and stay true to who we are with all of our companies and talents or anything that we put out to the world and another cool part that i didn't mention as well is that when you actually go on the shopping experience on our planet cb times any collaboration there's actually we have music, so you can go on there, listen to music while you shop, which is super cool. That is super cool. I actually checked it out before I started talking to you guys. It's, it's a pretty cool experience overall. Thank you. Now, again, I want, I, again, I want to thank you for taking out this time to speak with me. I really appreciate the vibration that you are sharing with the world. 
I can tell that it's very intentional and I can tell that it's coming from your heart and it's beautiful. Um, thank so you. thank you so much for this time. Of course, thank, thank you. you. Yes, yes. So world, this is Coke for sure, for sure. So world, this is Coke Breezy right here on Rolling Out. Man, take a minute, check out the websites. Can you guys share your IG uh, and socials real quick? Yeah. Our IG, all of our social media is all just Coco and Breezy. And our eyewear social media is Coco and Breezy Eyewear. And then to get the Planet CV times Zinni collaboration, it's zinni.com slash Planet CV. Awesome. So again, thank you for your time. And as I always say, stay focused, positive, and productive. Peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. This was so amazing. Um, I can't. I hope to meet you guys in person when the world opens back up again and continue doing this amazing work. Thank you so much. Word. Peace, y'all.